it's safe to say that every Monster Hunter fan out there is anticipated for the upcoming new Monster Hunter game, Monster Hunter Wilds. With so little actually known and shown for it, and a lot of questions unanswered since the official reveal trailer, everyone and their mum is guessing at what the game will play like, what monsters there will be, how the systems will work, and so on, so there's a lot of stuff going around on the internet. With a ton of rumours circulating and getting debunked, it's always interesting to see what people are talking about just in case you can gleam something truthful or at the very least just a bit fun. Now if you somehow missed out on this recent fake rumour that went around, which by the way has since been revealed as being an impersonator of a credible Capcom leaker called Dust Gollum. So what essentially happened is someone impersonated them to circulate details about Monster Hunter Worlds and honestly some of it's pretty hilarious. Most notably for me was the idea that they're bringing back the Godzilla monster aka Zora Magdaros and imagine for one second if Zora was the first known monster to be rumoured in Monster Hunter Wilds. I think many of us can agree that that would be quite a depressing thought, and even though I don't mind Zora that much, it's definitely not one that I would really care to return. Am I just crazy, or was Zora just really a boring monster to fight, especially compared to some of the other ones that are out there? On top of this, the impersonator was trying to pass off Wilds as being the biggest game Capcom has ever attempted, it being far more experimental than previous titles, and it being a fully open world where the story and end game revolves around the open world. Now it would be fair to make an educated guess from the reveal trailer that the game will probably be quite big and that it might be an open world game, but talking about how the story and the end game will revolve around this when only one reveal trailer is even out there for the game is kind of crazy. They also said they know major things but proceeded not to talk about any of those major things and then ended it with a Q1 2025 release. Now personally we are expecting a 2025 release as we did see 2025 at the end of the reveal trailer but until there is a firm official date I wouldn't hold our breath as release windows can change all the time for upcoming games. That being said, 2025 does seem about right for the release as long as it doesn't get delayed, maybe 2026 in a worst case scenario. The actual Dusk Gollum did weigh in after all of this nonsense, saying he never said any of this and it was someone faking messages to pass it off as something he said. So we know that was fake. But there's also been this slide going around from the user Garuda Kings on Reddit, and it does show some pretty crazy details about upcoming titles and their release windows. Now this isn't confirmed or denied, but it does seem pretty fake to me, however it is still interesting. We can see a series of upcoming releases after the more recent Dragon's Dogma 2 on March 22nd. They're suggesting a Dragon's Dogma 2 expansion called the Dragon Princess on November 29th. Now I think it's fair to say every Everyone wants a Dragon's Dogma 2 expansion akin to Dark Arisen from the first game, but I'm not really sold on this one. We can also see Monster Hunter Wilds listed for March 14th of 2025, which honestly could be around the right time if it does get released without delays. And then we can see Resident Evil X for November 24th, and this one's quite interesting because that previously mentioned Capcom leaker Dusk Gollum has said before that there are five new Resident Evil games in development. So if that is true, we can expect more on the horizon. And then finally, and most interestingly, we see Pragmata and an expansion for Monster Hunter Worlds called Cataclysm set for 2026, which while I do actually like the name, Cataclysm sounds pretty badass, this is very far-fetched as we don't even have a set release for Wilds yet, let alone its first expansion, so take this all with a grain of salt. Now of course, all of these kind of things can be easily faked, but it is interesting nonetheless as there is just so little official news on Wilds, so it's understandable why when these things pop up, everyone pays attention to them. What I can tell you though is that in the 2023 Game Awards, it was confirmed that we'll see more information about Monster Hunter Worlds sometime in summer of 2024, with rumours speculating that this information drop in the summer could include more comprehensive gameplay footage and even a more precise release date. I did also spot this funny April Fool's joke from One Angry Goose on Reddit, showing a fake image of a bunch of empty TX for Wilds. Honestly, Capcom have been doing microtransactions pretty heavily for a long time, so I do expect some form of paid DLC in Wilds, similar to what we got in World and Rise, but hopefully they don't go too far. 
On this topic, we know that Rise got a lot of weapon and armor skins as paid DLC, and even things like the Velkana Palamute skin, which while it was free, it does show how far these things can go. What if you could just buy an alternate mount skin for Monster Hunter Wilds? If you want to ride a Devil Joe, just pay $3.99. How far do you think the microtransactions in Wilds will go, and do you care or not? I am most interested in the mounting and riding aspect of Monster Hunter Wilds. We know that in Monster Hunter Stories, you could tame and ride a ton of monsters. There was also that gacha game, Monster Hunter Riders, that was a spin-off released in 2020, but was then shut down in 2022. So it's not too far of a reach to see that riding monsters is a thing in the franchise already that they are familiar with and that they could charge for them. I think because there's so little officially revealed information about Monster Hunter Worlds at the moment that a lot of it is left to our imagination. Honestly, in my opinion, this is often a good thing. The track record for Monster Hunter games is usually to reveal every monster pre-release in the official trailers, leaving out that excitement and awe of discovering a new monster in-game for the first time as a surprise. Do you like or dislike the reveal of all the monsters in Monster Hunter games pre-launch? Personally, I do enjoy knowing about certain monsters so I can be excited to fight them, and of course flagships are usually all over the cover art, so they're kind of a granted that you're going to know what the flagship is. But do you wish less of it was shown or not? That's pretty much all of the rumours and information going around at the moment, but we'll be sure to update you when there's more to talk about, so subscribe below and drop a like if you enjoyed this little look into some of the silly things going around in the Monster Hunter space.